Hello everybody and welcome back to the iOS Arcade and today we're playing Pocket Build. Now this is a plus title, it is an Apple Arcade game, however we're playing the iOS version today which is the one you can buy uh, to play on your iPad and iPhone uh, which is like the standalone non-Apple title and that's because it hasn't been released yet but I wanted to show it off and prepare a few of you for the gameplay because I think this game is going to be enjoyable. Uh, I find it a bit of mindfulness, I find it you can just let your little minions run, you can see the one there chopping the cabbages, uh, you can just let them go and do their thing and come back and play it. I like these sorts of games when I'm watching a TV show um, on maybe a Saturday evening. So. But we're going to start a new world, we're going to talk about the concept, we're going to show it off a little bit. I know from the game, from playing this, that uh, there is a, a really nice roadmap here, so you can see where they're currently working on. So multiplayer, hopefully in time for the release uh, of the Apple Arcade. Weather, that'll be really nice. Natural disasters were also really cool as well. I think that this game um, is fun. They give you a sandbox mode, which they actually recommend you to play, but if you want to do the survival mode, which is a little bit of a grinding game, but if you you know put your mind to it, you can actually build a city or a town quite quickly. Now I'm playing this on the iPad Pro with the, that's why you can see the mouse here, because I've actually got the, the trackpad uh, for the iPad Pro, but mainly you would play with touch controls. Uh, there is no controller support and it's not available on the TV or Mac, which is a real shame, but it's nice on the big iPad, so we're going to be playing that on today's uh, video. So I'm going to create a new world, and normally I actually play with a blank slate. I like to really start it off, but I'm going to just go with a, a tiny bit of land, because we don't need too much. And we'll just type in here, get the, the keyboard to launch, which it doesn't want to do it. We'll just type in here, we'll call it Arcade. And then we'll boot it up. And here's a, a just sort of it's very quick loading. But there you saw a world there that uh, someone else had created, and you can boot into those if you go into the creative view. So this is the the, the starter world. This is actually a really nice piece of la piece of land that we've got here. Um, obviously, there are a few resources already on the map that we can chop down, which are some trees, and we also have some food. And the idea of this game is, as you can see at the top there, we've got. Uh, 100 pieces of wood and we got 100 pieces of food and we use that to buy things so this is the buy menu and you can see different things cost different amounts of uh, items so I'm gonna play a very quick version of this game but I'm also gonna show you the pacing of it as well so normally we've got we've got nobody on the map here you can see we've got no people no animals no goblins so what you typically do on a first playthrough is come over to the the sort of uh, characters section Come over to people, and I typically buy one peasant boy and one peasant girl. Um, just give myself a bit of a distinction between the two of them. And you'll see that one's going to pick up some food, and one of them's going to chop up the wood. So if I rotate the map here, and you can get really close and, and, and see your characters, and you can see that they are chopping the wood down. Now, this is the pace of the game when you start off. So as you can see, they've been going probably 10, 10 seconds and we've only got one piece of wood so this is what I mean by the pace of the game at the very beginning is very slow um, so we've got one piece of food and we've got one um, piece of wood the trees do regen without needing to do anything so you don't have to worry about your landscape being ruined or needing to plant any more um, actually the pumpkins were gone that much she's now onto the uh, the, the wood <laughs> So what we're going to do is um, we can at any point switch onto sandbox mode and you'll see now I have unlimited resources. Um, some of the controls are a little bit finicky when you start playing with it. Um, I've got used to it and I really do think that the controls are pretty good. I wish there was a, a few quicker easier menus but I'm sure that they'll develop that in. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm not sure why it's not letting me do it. Maybe I selected the wrong one. So into the build menu. Uh, let's get a bit of land. Yeah, let's put these bits of land in. I don't think this is the right one. No. So, and then we can rotate round. There is an easy option to delete them. So we can just, you know, carry on building. And the whole point of this game is to have fun. This isn't the best technique to put land in, but it was the easiest I could think of from what I've played so far. There we go. Now, land I think is free. So, like on the game, you wouldn't have to pay for that in, in your resources. Um, what I'm going to do just to speed up some of the gameplay is just put quite a few soldiers down. And again, doesn't cost us anything in sand mode. And then you'll see now 
this is where you'll start getting a lot more resources because you've got a lot more people there's actually too many people and they haven't got anything to do so and then this is where in the actual game mode you'd go and find some trees and you slowly build up a map um, I might be able to load up one of my other maps for us and just sort of show you where I've got to because this is basically the playthrough now you've got people that are chopping wood and you've got people that are collecting food resources to buy the items and that's what I mean, it's quite a mindfulness game because that, that's the concept, it's about just ruling around um, there's obviously a not a lot of things at the moment to do with the game uh, but they are developing it um, as a almost city builder I'd say it's pretty good um, because if we wanted to put this house down we've got full rotation of it we can change the scale of items as well which helps when you're trying to do some free building these are completely cosmetic to the islands, they don't like go in at night time maybe that because something they could put in in the next few patches I'm not sure if that's on the timeline um, but as you can see like you can really expand and the maps are huge as well um, there's a few good city ones uh, with actual shops what I'm gonna try and do though is I want to go to my worlds and if I load up Devon and this is my sort of like world I've done from scratch. I'm still on survival mode, let's sandbox mode, let's turn it off. So as you can see, I've got a few soldiers in uh, here. These are collecting the resources from the farm, which of course is our food. We've got some nice placed houses. Please ignore my path there. And as you can see, I've got my lumberjacks, um, or my other people collecting the wood there. And I built this nice castle. And the castle doesn't cost a lot to build at all. Like you'd think oh to have a castle in this game you're going to need to collect loads of resources you really don't it's about the same as the houses um if we just go in there you can see that they are literally look one piece of wood so like y you can build a lot from starting off then i built the map outwards and over here we've got a goblin um the goblin will actually fight the people in the castle so that's why he's so far away and he's collecting his coins um they're very expensive goblins though um as you can see, they cost uh, almost double, um, and he's got that mining speed. But look at all these, like, they've got dragons, we've got giants. Um, yet to play with these, I'd really, I don't really have the money to pay for them. Um, I mean, it is in terms of the resources. I could go on sandbox mode and plonk one in, but I don't want to spoil the game for myself, um, because I actually do enjoy playing it like this. And, and this is what I mean, like, now, like, there's, if I've got TV on in the background, and I just want something to keep my you know, mind active while I'm watching it, um, especially if you've got TVs with ads on. I just leave it running, and then I come back to it, and I've got, oh, 280 logs, and I come into here, and I'm like, what can I buy? So there's, like, loads of stuff you can do. So I want to put this monument down. Where is it? Where is it? I actually can't see. Oh, there it is. I can put that down in here. And you can see it's spent the resources. So now that... Oh, I've got a mode on here that um, the height toggle isn't on. So, and then this is just the, I'd not, I would not call this game finicky because I actually think the controls are decent, but sometimes I, this is where I think like some of the menus could have been like maybe just where my, uh, I can't really show you without putting something there. So you see where the top of that, where the pond is, I feel like there could have been a quick bar menu, but then again, I'm thinking on the iPad Pro that works, but I'm not sure it would work on the iPhone because again, limits of display. So the only thing my map is lacking and you'll see this when I do it, is go into the, the night mode. You can have a day-night cycle. We are just lacking a lot of light. So that is my next task. But if I was to do it, I'm looking at my prices. We go into our light sources, and then we've got all the types of light sources in here. But look, they are so expensive, like just for a stick. Like it costs 700, 500 wood. So maybe... I don't want a modern street lamp, that kind of defeats the object of a castle really. And I think my only option is this one, which is absolutely pricey. So zoom out, find out where it is, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't look very medieval for the, the vibe, which is one of my favourite words to go on. There we go, let's just put that there. I wanted a flame, but again items aren't limited in this game at all but they're certainly pricey if you're playing it the survival way so oh one more key feature and i love this this is more like on the iphone easier to control but you can go 
into first person. Now this one doesn't want to let me do it unless if I'm completely missing it. Oh, yeah, I don't, there's a big button down the bottom left. I don't know why I thought it was in this menu, but uh, yeah, you just tap on a person, press control in first person, and uh, as you can see, here's my castle. And this is what I mean, like, <laughs> this is my only real medieval source of lighting. Um, a lot easier on the iPhone to control, um, but you can go out and live uh, your little creative world and, and get to know it. Some of the more impressive maps are really nice to see, so I'm just going to chop this tree down. And as you can see, the speed of it. It's no diamond pickaxe, let's put it that way. So, no animations for it, really. I probably need to be closer to, to chop it down. There we go. I thought this would actually be easier to chop down. Maybe I've just picked one of the dodgy placed trees. There we go. So that would have collected wood, but I actually don't think it's any quicker. Um, than actually playing it like with them letting them do it themselves and look at oh wow the fire torch give me give me <laughs> again I wonder if he'll keep this if he keeps this he might actually like the map up. I just want to see if I can annoy this goblin hello no but I'm sure if I if I back out of this he he might start fighting him after we take him off as you can see, they're fighting now. So, but yeah, this is this is pocket build. Um, you know, just as a sort of like how I've shown you to get started on that first map is really how like the game flows. Um, I took quite a couple of um, attempts to understand the gameplay, but once you sort of get to know what the game's all about and knowing that actually there is no end goal, it's just about having fun, building little towns. Um, and look forward to the updates, I guess. Uh, let's just go back to the menu and uh, sort of show you that roadmap again. Again, it's remembering how to get out of the thing. Uh, is it here? Uh, main menu, there we go. Yeah, main menu. So look at that world. I will try and load the, one of the worlds up in a minute. But uh, as you can see, future updates, we've got weather uh, going inside buildings, so obviously making it more immersive. Trains, you can't go wrong with trains. Vehicles. And uh, that's what we want to see, battles and wars and zombie modes. That will really, really make it, um, you know, about placements and things. That That's really cool to look forward to. Obviously, there is the subscription, but that has been promised in the Apple Arcade version not to be there. So, And finally, let's just load. How do we load the world? Here we go. We're going to load one of, the, one of the background ones made by Tricky Tan. And uh, here we go, look at this. So you're gonna, really going to get to know some of the detail that you can do. So if you're like into city building, look at that. I didn't, How did they even get that? I know that it's obviously something you can find in that. Look at it though, it's just beautifully placed. And those are the sorts of torches that I want on mine. So we'll put it in day so you can uh, get to know it. You can ride ho horses in first person and you can also sit in boats. So where are they getting these cool outfits from? So you can clone the world, but like, my God. And I think you can destroy the worlds as well. If I turn it off, that sandbox mode. Is it gonna let me? No, but I can, look, I can change anything. The wizard, what does the wizard do? You can mount a horse. There's no horses nearby. <laughs> so, oh, look at this, look at this guy. He's cruising around in his boat, so. But yeah, look at that. And I don't know whether that's the map limitations. Um, Oh, they got a Western train. This is obviously some of the trains that they're going to be putting in. That's so cool. Whoever made this, Tricky Tan, was the one it said it was. Amazing job. So there we go. That That is Pocket Build and what to expect on the Apple Arcade. The gameplay, I assume, is going to be very similar to what you've just seen today. I don't think the format needs tweaking. Um, obviously, they need to take out the transactions because that's what Apple Arcade's all about, is making sure that the games are full games and not, you know, arcade games with transactions. But that game is, uh, yeah, definitely one to look forward to. That is being released on the 1st of April 2022 uh, on Apple Arcade for the iPhone and iPad. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in another.